Day Church. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, share a message with you today. Uh, we're looking at the 5G series. Uh, the first week we looked at growing, the second week we looked at giving, and today we're in our third week, which is gathering. And so um, it's an interesting kind of topic. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. That's where we're really going to focus on. Um, but I'm going to share a couple of thoughts and a couple of stories with you as well as we go along. So how about we pray to start with? Just ask God to be part of our, our time together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thanks for the opportunity to share um, in and through your word. And I just pray that our hearts be um, focused on you, um, allowing us to move and grow as you see fit. And pray the spirit be strong and moving in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm going to read the verse first so that we've got a platform to work with. And then I'm going to show you a picture. Um, so Hebrews chapter 10, 24, 25 says this. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, you might have heard that passage before. We're going to unpack it in a minute. But I wanted to show you this picture. And uh, this will be... Um, I'm going to take this to church on Sunday as well. So um, you see this is a, 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 an Aboriginal symbol. The round section with people sitting around is actually a gathering. It actually means gathering. And so um, we're going to bring this on Sunday and we're going to show people. And I really thought it was interesting that thousands of years ago, um, Indigenous people had symbols of gathering places. And uh, what we're actually going to do together on Sunday is put our fingerprints. And I get everyone to put their fingerprint with some paint all around the gathering. Um, I guess a bit of a, a token thing as... Uh, representative of, of Penrith Baptist Church, but I like to see it as a reconfirming to the gathering. Hey, this is my place. This is where I gather. This is where I worship. This is where I, like in the word there, this is where I encourage. This is where I urge people on. This is where I motivate people. And so this is a bit of a, a symbolism, but I love just having a bit of variety in, in, in I guess, reconfirming our commitment to the gathering. And so I just thought I'd show you that as a bit of a visual. Um, but as we um, unpack this, I guess this is a fairly short message and a short verse because I'm not going to look at all the other aspects in the Bible of where it talks about gathering. I really want to just focus in on this one because I think there's plenty in it for us anyway. And if you've been going to church for a long time or gathered in in church circles, maybe in life groups or Bible study groups, maybe you meet up for prayer meetings or coffee, you know, coffee clubs or whatever it might be. Um, and then there's times where you gather and you you might pray and meet and basically what it is is connection and what we're actually looking at in this 5G is about connecting. And so this verse from Hebrews, or these two verses from Hebrews, actually gives us a nice little platform to work with and encourage us to to I guess move from our mundane which might be happening or might not be happening maybe you're on fire for God and this is just a nice reminder but for some of us maybe this is that encouragement we need to to kind of move forward in how we gather maybe we're in a stale position or maybe we need to um, just be enlightened by God's word to recommit to a gathering or maybe start a gathering whether that be a small group life group or maybe that's commitment to the, to the large group and um, in the gathering so what I want us to do is I've just given us three really easy points one word points so that you could go away and go oh yeah if I can do these three things I'm looking at I'm looking at improving my my life, my, my, I guess my spirituality, my growth, my connection, because I'm putting Hebrews into action. 
Does that make sense? So let me just read it again. Um, it says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as the day as we see the day approaching. The first the first point I want to say is on point. Then you go, what? On point? When we gather, okay, whether it be small group, big group, whatever it might be, we want to be on point. And when I say on point, it's like on God. In God, through God, for God, it's on point. You understand what I'm saying? They're all onwards, okay? So you, 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 you'll get it as we go along. So you know when people say, oh, that's on point. Or that, that message was on point. Or um, that player was on point that game. Or whatever it might be. We've got to make sure when we gather, we're on point. We're not, we're not messing around. We're not over-exaggerating. We're not um, wasting people's time. You know what I mean? It's on point. It, it's, it's, really, um, it's really nestled around God. Okay? On point. The second one is on you. And you went, what? On you? Well, it's a slight slang, Australian kind of slang, isn't it? Good on you. You know, I might say to someone, oh, on you, mate, on you, well done. And, it, and it's encouragement, okay? It's encouragement. Here it says, this verse is all about encouragement. So we spur one another on towards love and good deeds, but we encourage one another, and we, we're not neglecting to meet each other. So on you, good on you, mate. So we want to make sure that our gathering is all about encouragement, okay? And the last one I put is on wood. And you think, onward? Well, onward kind of gives me the impression that there's something to always keep going towards. There's onward, you know, onward and upwards kind of thing. So onward is about, okay, yes, we know that Christ is coming back one day. And there's that, that hope and insurance in that. But there's also hope and insurance in what Christ has already done. Through the death and resurrection has given us hope, has given us the freedom to live in and through the Spirit has given us opportunities to live um, in relationship with God because of what Jesus has done. But his life and his teaching and his miracles and how he loved and treated people are, I guess, living, they're living um, messages for us today as well. So there's always an onward going um, in, our, in our gatherings. There's always a, you know, a bit more of a purpose rather than we're gathering because we like the coffee here. You know what I mean? So there's always that onward pressing of Christ is coming, Christ has been and, and died for us, but Christ has also left us some beautiful lessons as well as the Holy Spirit. He's given us a spirit of guidance and direction. And so um, there's, a, there's a graph um, that we hopefully we can put up for you um, and it's looking at the four kind of the, the life of a community. And the first one talks about a healthy community and that has a high commitment and high vulnerability. And I guess that's what we're aiming for here. As our groups gather, as our groups meet, whether it be big or small, that's what we're looking for. High commitment and high vulnerability. Then we go across to the self-centered community, which is low commitment but high vulnerability, okay? So we wanna try and steer away from being a self-centered community. Uh, we have the no community, which is low commitment, low vulnerability. And I guess we're not really talking about that because we're looking at our gathered spaces. And so we'd like to think there is commitment and we'd like to think there is um, some vulnerability, maybe some room to improve. Uh, and there's the dutiful community High commitment, but low vulnerability. And sometimes we do see that in churches as well. Um, we might see high commitment, but then people are really standoffish, don't want to sort of necessarily give of themselves or open up their hearts to something new, or maybe um, maybe they're stuck in their ways. I know I can get like that. So um, there's always, I love this graph because there's always room for improvement. There's always ways in which we can 
maybe there's uh, opportunity to commit more, maybe there's opportunities to be vulnerable more, and I like to add there's almost um, times where we can be encouraging more, as in Hebrews is all about encouragement. So maybe there's a lesson in there for all of us today. Um, maybe there's opportunities for you from today onwards, yet yeah, I'm going to commit more, or I'm going to be vulnerable more, or I'm going to be encouraging more. And so you work in, you go into these gatherings, whether, you know, big, small, whatever it might be, and you go in with the purpose of, of I'm committed, I'm vulnerable, meaning I'm, I'm open, meaning I want to um, express my feelings, means I want to be able to share with people, uh, I'm not closed off, um, but I'm also there to encourage, I'm there to encourage um, other people. And just to finish with, I want to share with you a story that my dad taught me when I was younger. Well, it's, just, it's one of those life lessons, you know, you get from your father. This is, this is the time. And so I was um, mid-teens, I think. And uh, I, for those who know me, I love sport, love soccer particularly. And I was playing soccer and um, yeah, um, totally committed. I was the high vulnerable, high committed to soccer. Like I was there, I was early, I'd go to training every week, I'd play the games every week, I'd give everything to the team, you know, I'd play for the team, I'd try and inspire the team, and, and, all, and all of that. And then I remember um, at church, um, I didn't really like church at the time, I was probably in that mid awkward teens, you know, when everything Everything was in a bit, uh, you know, and I was probably really a bit self-centered. And I remember one day after church, Dad had had the word to me, you know, and it was my dad was a lecturing kind of dad, so he gave me a nice lecture or teaching point, you could say, to to sort of address an issue that he saw in my life, and that was my commitment to church. You see, I was going, but I was going grudgingly, and I was going because he sort of made me go. And if I didn't like it, I kind of made a point of it. And maybe I was destructive, because my dad used to run the youth um, section, where I, which I was part of as well. So he could see my behaviour. And one day after church, he had that talk, and he said, "Listen, son, like I see you on the soccer field." I see you at training. I see you at the games. I see that you're, you, you know, you're ready an hour before we have to even leave. I see how much effort you put into the training. Uh, how much, you know, how much you play for the game. You play for your team. You encourage your team. You do all that, and I'm really proud of you for that. You know, that's that's great. But he said, I see you at church, and you're not a team player. In fact, you are disrupting the other kids. Um, you know, some of the kids look up to you and you are, you're letting them down. You're not being a good team player. You're influencing them to not listen. And your commitment, like you dragging yourself there and you're not, you're not showing the, the beautiful commitment that you do to soccer. And he goes, I wish you would show that same love that you have for soccer, for God and the church. And that really hit home, that life lesson, you know, in that awkward teenage years. And it really struck me to change that around. And I'm really grateful that he did teach me that because sometimes those lessons we don't get taught. We just go through life and if someone doesn't say, hey, listen, I've seen your area and this is really great, but here it's not. And I think sometimes, for me particularly, it really changed my perspective on church. And um, now, now, I'm so much older and so much more mature, but I've come to love God and love the church. Not just because of what Dad said, because I've, that takes maturity and takes your own personal growth, but it just allowed me to see the gathered space as it's not about me, it's about what I can give. And so like when I give myself to the soccer team and, and I, want them to, I want them to succeed, I want the best for them, and I want to be part of that. I love to see that in, in our gatherings. Like you come with this purpose of, 
I want to get the best out of my time here as well as I want to see the best out of everybody. And I'm actually going to motivate others to give their best. And when we're all like on the same page on this, you know, onward, on your, and what was the other one? Um, on point, when these on years are all to working together, it's just the gathering space, God just utilizes it. He utilizes the connections that we have. And so um, I can see that in our life group now. We've joined the life group this year. It's been really, really positive. It's been great. And um, we get to not only connect with people, but share life together, you know, and pray for each other in in spaces that we probably wouldn't pray in a big gathering. We get to hear, hear stories from each other, um, have some laughs, have some fun, um, share some food. But it's also, um, I just love how the Spirit's moving in that space because I think we give God space to do that. Whereas sometimes the bigger gathering, we don't have the opportunities to have those intimate conversations. And so the gathering, the big gathering is great and it's purposeful and we need that. But I encourage people to be part of a life group as well. So you have that, just that extra connection, that extra growth, those extra guys who can go, good on you, you know, great work. I love to hear, how, how did you go at work this week, you know, or how did this go? And you really can connect, really connect with people how God intended us to connect. And so hopefully this has been just an encouragement um, for us all in, in an area that we might need to grow in. Um, and if it's not an area you need to grow in, then keep praying for others to be able to join a life group or feel more part of a gathered space or maybe there's areas in which we can serve or, or, or minister to um, in our own gathered spaces. I'm sure there's opportunities for us to grow and connect more. And so I just hope and pray that that will be, today's lesson will be encouragement for that. To finish, let's just pray and commit this to God. Lord, just thank you for um, your awesome love, which which pushes us and guides us into spaces that we wouldn't normally go into. And I just know in my own life, Lord, that you've worked in and through me to be more diligent in the gathered spaces. And Lord, help me to connect more with those around me as I pray for each of us here listening to this, that we can connect more in our gathered spaces. Lord, help us to be more servant-hearted. Lord, help us to be more encouraging. Help us to be more of a good player, motivating those around us to love you more and to do good stuff for you. And Lord, help us to support each other and pray for each other when times are tough. And allow the gathered space to be such a great network of support. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.